good people what's up what it is you know what time it is a little bit later but we're here uh hey we're here for blazing takes number one show it's in the world no matter what times it comes on and so i'm here i'm rick blazing of course you know i'm joined by my good friend my ace boom coon siege how are you today bro Dude, we're we're doing good great day great hump day apologize everyone for the delay but we're here now so Let's get, let's get right back into these Southern Region team previews, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy had to get his rest, man. I'm sorry. I, I apologize, y'all. Big Daddy had to get his rest. I'm all, I'm all, uh, 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 I'm ready now. I'm all rejuvenated. I'm ready to go. All right, let's do it then. So let's start off with one, a team that definitely made some of the most improvements or biggest changes over the offseason, uh, Queen City Kings. Yeah. Now, we know the first thing they did was they brought in head coach Skinny Washington from Heartland Zombie Stars. And to everyone's surprise, certainly mine, uh, he brought with him Renzo Bryant and Carter Field. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> everyone's surprise. I, I, I didn't see that one coming. But not at all. Was. And then he made another splash uh, not too long after getting there, and he brought over Nick Hugo. So, now, I didn't see that coming, for real, did, for real. For real, for real, that one I did not see coming. But so what, what you got in this team is uh, two leaders in Renzo Bryant and Nick Hugo who are known around the league for not only their defense, but their effort. You know, giving 110% on every play, um, leadership, vocal leadership, on and off the court, things like that. So them, and then you got Carter Fields right behind him, who's just a pogo stick of a human being. Um, And they got a few other guys who can can play too, but how do you see this season kind of shaking out for them? Hey, you know, first of all, we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. And that's that, 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 that weak-ass play Coach Skinny try to run. Talk about we the underdog. No, you not the underdog. <laughs> like, that part, I got I to gotta address that first. I got to address that like a, like, a, like a mail carrier. That's what There's no way on God's green earth of your underdog. You know what I mean? You can't go get all that talent and say, yeah, we the underdogs. According to who? <laughs> According to, to, to the Golden State Warriors? Okay, yeah. Other than that, we ain't, don't play the under, underdog card, bro. So uh, I know off the rim comes on on Saturdays. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Coach Skinner should be a candidate. He should win the award because that was whack. He should get to come on, dog, for sure, for playing underdog card. Okay, now we got that out the way. His team, uh, he's, he's, he's put together a really good uh, group of individuals. I think defense is going to be their calling card. They got a lot of defensive guys on the team. And a lot of, they have a lot of athletes, too. Uh, I think maybe Bay Area is probably the only team that has more, uh, than uh, Queen City does. So he has defense on this. He got defense, and he has a lot of athletes. Now, and, and those players that he has, you just mentioned, the Nick Hugos, the Renzo Bryans, uh, uh, X-Man Bryan. Uh, he got uh, Windsor, who I think may uh, have the highest ceiling out of all the players. I want to also highlight uh, DeMont- DeMontre Johnson, uh, who's their 5'11 guard, only 15 years old. Uh, I watched him in some pickup games, and, uh, you know, Renzo's picking him up full court. Full court press the whole time. DeMontre did a really good job of uh, running the offense with Renzo Bryan uh, breathing down his neck, and that's what you need to see. That's why you have certain players match up against certain players, because you need to see what kind of teammates you have. You need to see what kind of teammates that you battle with. And this, this DeMontre Johnson, it may not show this season because he has, a, a you know, a lot of players in front of him. But I can see him next season taking a big leap forward. If not this season, uh, I like I like what the guy brings to the table. But this team specifically, that's interesting to see, Siege, uh, what kind of offense they run. They have a lot of um, – Opportunities, a lot of players. I don't. I be. I wanted to see who's getting the ball in the clutch. It may be a case by case scenario. I'm really anxious to see how Coach Skinny put this team together, but he should be just fine on the defensive side of the ball for sure. Yeah, I, the defensive side. I'm not too concerned about this. I mean, they're big men. The one thing you can say is maybe they don't have a ton of height. Mm-hmm. Um, but what they lack in height, I mean, they're big men. Nick Hugo, six foot seven, listed out anyways. Carter Field, six foot nine, and then they have Weapon X, Xavier Bryant, who is another six foot seven. But all three of those guys, what they are is extremely athletic, um, and they're hustlers, they're dogs. So right. I'm not too worried. And obviously, you got Renzo Bryant on the defensive end, you know, on the perimeter. Um, 
So they, I think they'll be fine defensively. But like you said, I, I am wondering who kind of steps up and takes those shots. And, yeah, it can be case by case to begin with. But at some point down the line, yep. you kind of do have yep. to establish that guy. Yep. Um, I know a lot of people are expecting Renzo Bryant to kind of take a leap this year offensively. Um, if, if he can be that guy, that, that sounds perfect. I also know a lot of people are really high on Cairo Windsor. Um, yeah. He's a very versatile kind of guy. Six foot five, can play guard, can play wing. Um, he, he could turn into that guy for them. He, he might be their best shooter they have in general. So wouldn't be surprised to see him kind of take on that role. But, yeah, I, this is one of the teams that it's kind of hard to pinpoint what kind of scheme they might run. Um, but to be honest, that might work in Coach Skinny's favor. Absolutely. Uh, nobody knows what you're going to pull out. So you can kind of switch it up a little on people. So they, they should be an interesting team to watch for sure. I agree. I agree 100%. Who we got, who we got next on deck? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Rick. We're going to head on back to your home state. We're going to head on back to Texas. Oh, we're yeah. going to talk about everything's you. big in Texas, baby. Everything. Speaking That's of big, in Texas, there are not many, if any, moves made this off season bigger than Lone Star Basketball bringing in Arthur Lattimore. Brought him back. One hundred percent. They had what I would call a mass exodus from their roster. Um, after this past season, only two returning players in Nene Gibson and Mason Green, both of which very good pieces. Nene Gibson was kind of the understudy to Jace McGuez last year, and they're going to need him to step it up if he can uh, this year as kind of a scorer for the perimeter game. Um, they brought in Mardon, really good athlete, great perimeter yep. defender. And then yep. I think their biggest moves, though, are the kind of role guys and shooters they brought to surround Arthur Lattimore because you got a guy like Arthur Lattimore down low. He's probably going to catch some double teams. He's got to have guys to kick it out to. But, I mean, they brought in Aiden Weaver, a known sharpshooter, came over from Bad Boys. They brought in Ronnie mm -hmm. and from Bay Air. Um, and they brought in a new recruit who looks really, really good shooting the ball, and that's Trey Bird. So I, I think they did a really I – I give them an A for their offseason moves. Um, they made a lot of good ones. They started with Arthur Lattimore, and they, they built around him. Yeah, two things. First of all, uh, we have to acknowledge that their defense this season is probably not going to be as great as it was last year. Uh, as as great as Arthur Lattimore is, he's not really a I dare you to come in the paint type defender. Um, so the perimeter, you know, I, I think they're going to lose a little bit defensively, but I think they're going to get they gain more offensively. Now, my biggest concern with Lone they get more offensively losing Jason McGuez? Huh? You think they gained offense after losing Jason Over, Guest? Overall, yes. I think I think because now you have a for real inside threat that you didn't have when Jason was there last season with Arthur Lattimore, and you still got guys who can shoot it. They might not be playmakers like Jace was, but Trey Burke can shoot it, Weaver can shoot it, and uh, Shanahan can do a little bit of everything. So I think overall they become a little bit more better on the offensive side. Now my question is this: Who's their number two? When you go past Arthur Lattimore offensively, because now coaches, this is the time you need to really listen it, listen up. If I'm the coach again and I'm playing against Lone Star, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the ball out of Lattimore's hands. I'm gonna double him. I'm gonna force somebody else to beat me other than Arthur. I know what Arthur Lattimore can do. I'm gonna force someone else, not named Arthur Lattimore, on the team to dare to beat me. And I'm just going to shake their hand if they do. So my question is, if you're Coach Woods, how do you set up your counterpunch when they take Arthur Lattimore out of the game? Because if I was a coach, that's what I would do. And I would say, okay, you got Trey Bird, cool, make him beat me. He got to beat me the whole – he got to beat me for 32 minutes. You got, uh, 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 you got Ronnie Shanahan, make him beat me. You got Weaver, make him beat me. And I don't even – I'm out on knee knees, so I'm not even going to mention his name like that. Um, so – what are you going to do if you're Coach Woods? I think your true number two option is probably, in my opinion, is Ronnie Shanahan. I say that because he he has the ability to do a little bit of everything. He can shoot a little bit. He can get his own shot. Those other guys, Weaver and Trey Bird, in my opinion, they're more of the spot-up shooters. I don't think they can just really just get their own shot that way. So Shanahan, in my opinion, should be your go-to guy. But we're going to see how they play it. But you have to establish your tiering as far as who's the number one guy when it comes down to it and who's your number two guy because if I'm any other team right now, I'm, I'm like, yo, guess who's not beating me today? Arthur Lattimore is not. 
and I'll force somebody else to beat me other than North Lattimore. I mean, I agree. Having a solid guy number two, having a couple options for number two is great, but having a guy that is the de facto number two is huge. I do think there's a few guys who could step in. Um, I hear that you're out on Nene Gibson. To I'm me. out on Nene. I'm out. He, at least to start the season, he's probably their de facto number two, and we'll see if anyone steps up because just as what he did last year, I mean, he, he did look good last year. Um, not great, but he looks good. I, I do kind of like the Ronnie Shanahan pick to be number two, and, and I'll tell you why I'm kind of thinking about that is we, we saw flashes of him look really good with Bay Area last year, but not a whole lot of opportunities, um, and that's something we know because, you know, Bay Area had a lot of guys, and there were a lot of guys who maybe didn't feel like they got as much playing time as they could have, um, namely, you know, Royce Anderson left, and everyone thinks he's Bay, the top. Bay Area, player. Has more, Bay Area has more guys than Laurie Harvey. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ronnie Shannon take a step and be more than just that role player that we kind of saw out of him last year. Um, he's going to have a lot more opportunity to do that this year. So um, I think he's an option to be it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mark Don kind of steps up and takes over because I think he's going to be – I think he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do it. But So I think they have options. A lot of guys who could step up. But – I, I like the Ronnie Shannon pick, and um, the the defense will lack. But Mason Green's not too bad of an anchor down there, so he's so, not bad. He, I mean, he's not Derek Long, but he's not bad. He's not Derek Long. He's not Derek Long. I mean, no. very few guys play defense like Derek Long did. So, you know, yeah. So we we're gonna see what what I'm I'm a hey, I'm anxious about what Coach Wood is gonna have uh have those guys doing. I like Mar Dunn. I, he did a really good job of getting the players uh, on the team now. Coach Woods and any fan for every other coach getting the players on the squad is one thing. Finding where they where they work best for your team is a whole other thing altogether. So I can't wait to see how that pans out, so we can see what happens. You guys, let us know what you think. Put it in the chat. Let's cuss and discuss for the late evening uh, version of Blazing Takes, and we want your opinions, man. Put it in the chat. Let's talk about what you think about Lone Star. What do you think about uh, what's team say before Lone Star? Queen City King. Queen City. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Fake-Ass Underdog. What do you think <laughs> about the fake-ass underdog? What do you think about uh, Lone Star? Put it in the chat. Let's cuss and discuss. Coach Kenny, I'm on your top, brother. We out. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.